Hello, teachers and students, Globe friends and colleagues. Thank you for inviting me to share a water story from where I live and work in California on the west coast of North America. My name is Matt Ferner, and I direct a water quality monitoring program in San Francisco Bay, which drains a watershed covering about 40% of California. That large watershed produces a lot of water flowing down from the mountains into San Francisco Bay and then the Pacific Ocean. It all starts with snowpack in the mountains, like this wilderness area by the Sierra Nevada Field Campus of San Francisco State University. As the snow melts, much of that water gradually drains into streams and rivers flowing downhill. Eventually, that water enters a broad and very heavily managed delta, where two large rivers converge. From there, the water gets funneled through a narrow passageway into San Francisco Bay. Along the way, the delta outflow accumulates nutrients, fertilizers, plants and animals, and a whole lot of mud. This satellite view of San Francisco Bay shows high concentrations of mud entering from the delta on the upper right and flowing towards the only connection to the Pacific Ocean in about the center of the picture. One focus of my program is monitoring the amount of mud that washes into San Francisco Bay and how those inputs of mud change over time. One important benefit of mud from the watershed is that it helps sustain protective salt marshes like this one that can reduce shoreline erosion and provide valuable habitat for fish, birds, and other wildlife. But the mud also fills in parts of the bay, making it difficult for boat navigation and public access to the bay for fishing and recreation. We sometimes study the mud by walking in from the shore, but that can be a tiring and messy job. More often, we measure the concentration of mud in the water that flows through tidal creeks, like this one. Sometimes we install large automated monitoring stations that measure multiple attributes of water, including turbidity or transparency, which depends on the amount of mud in the water. You can explore those data online for estuaries in California and other parts of the United States. Maintaining those monitoring stations is fun, but it takes a lot of hard work by graduate students and professional technicians. So we also study mud in the water through direct observation as these 11 year old students are doing from a floating dock. Other students collect water samples from San Francisco Bay by lowering down buckets or other sampling equipment from docks or piers. Then in the laboratory, the students filter those water samples to separate out the mud so that it can be weighed and converted to a concentration value. The amount of mud in different water samples can vary a lot. Each of these filters holds the mud from equal volumes of water collected at the same location once a day for a month. We also use similar methods with students who monitor microplastics in the environment. Filtering water and using microscopes to inspect the fibers and plastic particles that were retained on the filter papers. The relationship between mud and microplastics in the water is something that we are just beginning to investigate. Each year we use these methods to train students how to collect water samples and study mud and microplastics in San Francisco Bay. Then we share about what we have learned with other students and visitors during outreach events and conferences. 
Many of the questions people ask are about why mud is important for plants and animals living in San Francisco Bay and how microplastics are affecting aquatic ecosystems around the world. In closing, it is important to continue monitoring mud and microplastics in all types of water, including freshwater, saltwater, and estuaries where fresh and saltwater mix. This last picture of San Francisco Bay was taken from a plane and looks south across the Golden Gate Bridge and the city of San Francisco, with the waters of San Francisco Bay on the left and the Pacific Ocean on the right. My lab at San Francisco State University is located on the Tiburon Peninsula at the end of this yellow arrow. If you are ever in San Francisco, please feel free to contact me and come by for a visit. I would be happy to show you around the lab and our campus on the shore of San Francisco Bay. We could even collect some water and see what we can learn about it. Thank you for listening to my story, and I hope you enjoy World Water Day and every day on our blue planet.